You were talking about 1949, Lloyd Moore. Now we can go. Okay. <laughs> I, I used to hang around with Gene Boothink, and we, we went to the races at Canfield, Ohio, mm -hmm. and Rexford was driving, and Lloyd was driving, and I guess I rode there with Gene probably after the race. And there was a sucker in that race, too. Uh, after the race, Lloyd was had ulcers and he passed out. They had to just about stop the car when the race was over and catch him keep, to get him stopped. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't feeling well, so I drove him back to Corey from Canfield. And he, and he won, he either won or run. He was one of the first three, for sure. Right? And, and Rexford was one of the first three. And I, I drove Lloyd back to Corey from Canfield. What was, uh, do, do we call much about Bill Rexford? I knew him, but uh, see him at the garage. See, I was working for the phone company in Quarry at the time. Oh. Oh. That's where I met Gene originally. Oh. I used to keep a couple flatheads down at the garage at a gas station that Gene ran on whatever whatever they called that street then. It was a railroad track cross and it was a gas station there that he ran for Georgia. Junior had a used car lot up on up the top of the hill near Esselha. Okay. Now Gene is who? Gene Busink? Yeah, Gene is. That's uh, he's a brother. Brother, uh, Julian's uh, brother. Yeah, it was Gene, Cliff, and Julian. Okay, and, but of the three, did all three of them have an equal interest in racing, or was Julian sort of? Ju Julian, Julian had pretty much in control of everything. <laughs> 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 I don't know. If he financed Cliff or sold the, the business to Cliff, the ones that he was tired of, <laughs> what, what happened? But I do know that if there was a boozing opening a car lot somewhere, he had something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. uh, who was the oldest? Was Julie, Julie the oldest Julie, brother? Yeah, yeah, I believe. And then was it Gene or no, was it Cliff? Cliff. Cliff, then Gene. Yeah. Gene was. Quite a bit younger. Okay. At some point, though, Gene sponsored some cars at State Line, didn't he? Didn't Gene have some cars up there? Not that I know of. Okay. So, how was your interest? Did, did your dad have an interest in cars? Was there something? No. no. So, you were the first yeah. to be involved? Yeah. When I was about 28, I. A friend of mine traded me a motorcycle and I started liking them and then I raced them locally. And then I found out they gave money away for driving cars. <laughs> 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 so I tried that for a while. Terrific. I'm going to stop for a second. Is there a light here for this thing? Sure. Where is it, Tom? I'll turn it on. Uh, it, this one? Yeah. Oh, no. Middle? There. Middle, middle one. Middle yeah. one? That's right. Yeah, that's, that's better, Greg? Right. That's great. Just more light. Thank you. Um, Tom, we were looking at a program here. And a young race fan wrote this stanza about you. And it goes, Good old Tom Dill roars through the din. He sticks to his car like paint sticks to tin. He loves to hear the scream of old 51, and he goes across the line for another one. Mm -hmm. This is what he wrote about Tom Dill. Does that sound like you? <laughs> I didn't write it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously I, a I, fan did. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who wrote it. Well, it's a kid, yeah. from, kid from Erie who was a real fan of uh, yours. Uh, is your name signed it? Tim Martin. M-A-R-T-O-N, Mar Martone, Tim Martone mm. wrote that about no, you. don't know. So once you find out that, in fact, going from two wheels to four wheels 
is like stealing money. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you start? Where did you I mean it's in our brief old reading um, about you? You went to a lot of tracks around here. Yeah. Uh, How did it start? Where was, where was first? Uh, in '56, I raced uh, Sulphur Springs and Cool Road Speedway, which was just down the road here. Okay. How far down was Cool Road Speedway, Tom? It was at the second crossroad. What's the name of that crossroad? Harbor Green. And it was right there? It was on down the road uh, half a mile. Is there anything there? Is trees. there anything? Trees. <laughs> <laughs> like most tracks. And tell me where Sulphur Springs was. I know it was in the Findlay Lake area. Uh, just, hmm, I could take you there. <laughs> uh, we might want to do that. <laughs> it's the first left turn off of 426 in New York State. Down there, half a mile and over a little to the right a little bit. Okay. And there was the uh, stadium which we raced in 58 and 59, I guess. You used to clean house down there. Well, uh, Al Bunnell helped us set the cars up. His son ran. In fact, his son ran a car and on the 4th of July in hmm, 57, probably. He decided the car was needed to replace, so he wasn't going to run it. So Joe Mobile asked me to drive it, and I won the feature with the car. That'll teach him. <laughs> and then Richie built another car. We had two. Is Richie's son Scott Bunnell? No, it's his nephew. That's his nephew. Yep. Okay. In in 1959, you find your way to State Line in a, in a jalopy race. How how did you draw yourself to bust on New York? Well. I had stopped in at Skyline, mm -hmm. and somebody asked me to run the coupe a couple of times, but it ran out of motor a couple of times. <laughs> 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 and uh, then they, they had Skyline or State Line built by then. Mm -hmm. And so we went over there with the coupe that we ran locally. And you did pretty well that first 1959 with uh, the, the you ran the 100 lap jalopy championship there. Yeah, and the, and the following year too, same car. Same car. You also, that next year you, well you, uh, uh, it says here, State Line fans first heard of Tom Dill in 1959 when the track was running 100 lap jalopy championships. Tom towed in and outlasted a field of some 100 cars. There was a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, there was a fair chunk of prize money for Tom Dill and a two and one half foot high trophy. Yeah, will be a prize uh, <laughs> somewhere or, or it's gone. Then the next year, you get into late models. Yeah, we, for Mobile, uh and I run the car for him for. Oh, I don't know, two or three years. Did you? Then I bought a Dodge, new. Right. And raced that for a couple of years, three years. Did you own that Dodge yourself, or were you driving well, for somebody? I bought it from the Dodge dealer, and I paid him when I had the money. <laughs> I understand. It was brand new, and it it was covered under warranty. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Isn't that wonderful? 
<laughs> I can't <laughs> believe you said that. <laughs> Did you ever turn in a warranty claim on that oh, car? Oh, certainly. <laughs> that guy, I work for the Dodge dealers. <laughs> Different. You know, they like to have paperwork to show where their warranty money was going. So I was on the payroll and some of the stuff that we did for the race car was... So you had a factory uh, ride. Uh, more or less, uh, <laughs> uh, We had some of the stuff floor plan. I remember one time the, the uh, commodity checker came in to check and see where his cars were. And he told him, oh, insurance man has got this one. Uh, this is demonstrated out. He said, I can't find this car. He said, uh, go upstairs and look, there's one laying upside down. <laughs> 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 With a deer out of it. <laughs> They're doing some welding on it. <laughs> Oh, was that metal craft dodge? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Jeez. That is funny. That is funny. I, I'm reading something here about back in 1960, you and Joe Mobilia. Uh, did he have a daughter by the name of Ruth Mobilia? Yeah. Okay. She went to school with me. It's, it's, what was that? It's, it's down at Allegheny College. It's a mm. small world department. She lives up near the corner now, I think. Or, uh, they don't call it Laconia anymore. Um, the NASCAR track in uh, New Hampshire, is it? Is that right? Oh, oh up in New Hampshire? Is it New Hampshire? Uh, what's the name of the track again? I can't remember. Uh, New Hampshire International Speedway? That could be. It's a, it's a concrete track, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Um, they said they found, you guys in 1960 found a 1960 Chevrolet which had been banged up a little and fixed it up for racing. So great was the dent in one side of the car that a standing joke started. The car, the joke went, had been shipped in brand new from Detroit but fell off the truck at Cleveland and was dragged the western <laughs> way on its side. Yeah, it was a body we found wreck somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you start that story though, Tom? Well, <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> and it went on to say, uh, you and your friend had your troubles. When the car was running right, Tom found himself in the guardrails. When he had it under control, something would break down. Still in mid-August of this year, Tom got in front and won a 25 lap state line feature. No other driver had won a state line feature in his rookie year. Did you did you appreciate that at the time? Was that something special? Not, not to me, no. <laughs> Just good to win a race. <laughs> you, some of the drivers at the time are some of the guys that we've been talking with and give us your sense of uh, some of the, the, the fellow competitors at the time. And if I drop some names here, just give us a sense. Maybe there's a funny vignette or something like Squirt Johns. When I mention Squirt Johns, what's that mean to Tom Dill? Uh, he, he was he was a class of the field at that time. Yeah. yeah. Why was he so good, Tom? He cheated a little. <laughs> <laughs> How did he cheat? <laughs> Engine. Engine. Is uh, that right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he did. He, he told me since. Yeah. He, I, you know, I don't know what you call it cheating, but you know, you're supposed to be running cars that's near, near what they made, and he had stuff done the motor. No, he was. He, was, he, he yeah. confessed that to yeah. us yeah, that yeah, he yeah. was fooling with uh, cams and cranks oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It sounded like he sort of was ahead of the game and trying to get all of Yeah, well, I didn't realize how long, much before I started racing, that he had raced. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, uh, he'd run quite a few local tracks. Right. Did your 
time pass at all with Dean Layfield, or had he had died before you got racing? He he was running at Skyline a couple nights when I was there, but I had nothing to do with late models. That's yeah. Was there a sense of his reputation at all when, when you were watching him at Skyline? Oh, yeah. I I remember him going off the track and, and running around the back out of sight somewhere and come back on the track <laughs> to another entrance. Why would he do that? How would he do that? <laughs> at, at, uh, at Skyline, yeah. there was no fence on the back, no. so you could run off. You could... When you're coming out of turn two, you could literally fall off the track, run through the pasture, and then back up onto the track oh, in right. three yeah. and four. Yeah. Wow, that's something. Heil Russell. You run decent. I, you know, I didn't know him that well. Mm -hmm. Eddie Kisco. Nice guy. Was Frank Ruhlman had three cars at one time with Ronnie Blackmer and Heil Russell, Eddie Kisco. Uh, I, I gotta believe that was pretty hard to keep three cars out going on a weekly basis. Was well, that's all I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good answer. Yeah. 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 He lived over there on the on the road out of uh, sure. Yeah, Sugar Grove. No. That's Sugar Grove. Youngsville. Youngsville. Yeah. To Sugar Grove. You're right. right. Yeah. Yep. Up across the creek. Okay. Yeah. Nice garage in his backyard. That's all I did. And Ronnie was either married or gone with his daughter at that time. Okay. Okay. That's one way to get a ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Scott. Nice guy. Nice guy. Nice guy. You guys are all hunting partners, aren't oh, you? Yeah. yeah. So you got any good you got any funny hunting stories to tell about <laughs> Scott? No, he shot one of my first deer for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I never even saw it. I mean, he shot it in, in woods that you, you couldn't hardly see deer <laughs> on the last day of Near dark. What about Bill Bobby Schnars? Nice guy. But he he raced the same car for twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that, Tom? Same chassis, same setup, pretty much. So he didn't have to work. He already broke everything and replaced it with something heavier, so that. He didn't have to experiment much. That's, that's what Squirt said, too. He said Bobby perfected that chassis and then just yeah. stayed with it. Yep. Oh, that's uh, Roman. One year he bought the newest thing in Chevy Engine. I can't think what it was, but it was. Hmm. Sure was it. But he, he put it together and took it to state line book book a camshaft and took it home, put it together and brought the state line, broke a camshaft. <laughs> Come to find out that the engine out from Chevrolet was designed to have a Heavier, high balance on the front. Without that, it, it gets so much whipping the crank it would break the cam off at the end. Okay. And it happened to him two or three times with the engine that run good. And that was a Roman car, you said. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, was that the was that when the three twenty sevens came out? I, I I imagine it was on this three twenty seven, three fifty horse or something okay. like that. And they had a special harmonic balancer. Form. And the old ones would fit. So he just put together what he had, you know. What, what did a, a, what did Johnny Whitehead mean to you? Johnny Whitehead is one of the greatest drivers in the world. Yeah. Why is that? 
somebody asked me to drive a car that he'd been driving and doing decent with. One night, I couldn't hardly get around the racetrack in this car. <laughs> <laughs> It's scary to go fast. <laughs> so he knew his way around, huh? Yeah. Uh, I never thought he was much of a driver until I drove that car. <laughs> and then you realized yeah, how good he, he was. was a hell of a driver. <laughs> <laughs> a question to ask Tom Dill, and we've asked other people this, is if you got down to that last lap and there was just one driver out there and you were racing him that you didn't want to be with because you just kind of knew it was going to be nip and tuck hard to get around who would that one driver be hmm i didn't think it's <laughs> I was going to say Jack Cooney because he spun out almost almost each lap. It seemed like when I was running 150 leading, he was going crossways in front of me <laughs> at some time. But, but finale was tough. Was it? Yeah. Floyd. Did you say Bud finale or Floyd? Floyd. Floyd. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, let me tell you the answer that everybody else, from Squirt Johns to Bobby Schneiders to Marv Thorpe, when we asked the same question, every one of those guys, we asked the same question, they said the one single person they did not want to be on that last lap with one-on-one -on -one was Tom Dill. Why would they say that? I don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good about that. <laughs> no, that, that's the respect that you had, that you I, had for everybody. The, everybody. That's a, one you, answer. You were the hardest guy to race with. You raced harder than anybody. Well, we all knew an out there that we could win. <laughs> did you? Did you, you kind of like the uh, the adrenaline rush when you're at that point where? That guy, it's either going to be me or him that's going to win this race. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I can see that wish looking. You, yeah. Wish you could still do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about guys like some of these characters we've heard about, like Jughead Pierce or... Jug? <laughs> he's, he's still living. Yeah. In uh, Spartanburg. Is he? Spartanburg? South Carolina? South Carolina? Oh, oh, I thought you meant Pennsylvania. No. I was going to no. say, we'd have to get down there this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. What was he like? I mean, it just he seemed to be a character. Uh, everybody thought he was a drunk. Yeah. Well, he, he reached good. Yeah. For, for I don't know, snarzy maybe he ran, whatever. But then he, he got the, he was, I wouldn't say he was a drunk. We got the reputation as a drunk because one beer would put him out of business. Ah, yeah, yeah. He worked for me at a different time. Oh, did he? Oh, did he? Yeah. He worked for Jimmy Polaro. Huh? Oh. We have lots of stuff on you, Tom. And one of them is a headline that says this, Dill captures 150 lap race. Do you remember that race? Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you remember about that race? The dogs stay together for <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In your world, 150 laps, that's... And at least the state line Uri's, that's got to be the longest race there was, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And you could do 150 laps on one tank of gas? Oh, yeah. Was that, mm -hmm. was the, was that the reasoning behind that? Evidently, I don't. I don't know. They, we had races different places that occasionally they stopped for fuel. Mm -hmm. I was leading at uh, race race seven one night. And they had a gas stop at 50. Wow. And I ran out of gas, leading at 99 or something. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Oh, no. Got the car wrecked. Somebody run over me from... We were, 
were reading something here that we found uh, quite remarkable, Tom, is in, I think in 1961, you decided to go to Daytona. What, what, what prompted you to take a group of guys and go down to the Daytona 500? Jerry and I was paid to drive the race car. Uh. So we worked on some Finley. Mm -hmm. In fact, we tried it out at Finley. <laughs> Is that right? The New York State Police should be reading this up. Julian put the race engine in a Another body, the, the, and he said, "Let's try that out." So we went down to the village and in Station Road, and I wasn't particularly hurrying, but evidently I picked up a sheriff deputy somewhere in Finley or somebody. And I come down into Pennsylvania, and I, I know it, it would run over 150. My gosh! And I think it was four of us in the car. <laughs> so I went down and across, and up there's a cross up on top of the hill. And I told you, and I said, "This cop, I gave the light." So I think maybe we ought to get out of here. <laughs> So I turned around and headed back towards the cop and went back to Finley Lake as good as it would do. And we took the car to court in a hurry. In a hurry. And they said the cop stopped in Finley and asked somebody what kind of a car was ahead of me. He didn't even know the color. <laughs> <laughs> but, but by the time I got to court, I told you, I said, I think this thing's knocking. And he took it apart the next day, and sure enough, it was. It had loosened the bearing. They put a, a windage trick. No, another windage. They put the, the pan pickup too close to the pan, the oil pickup, and it ran out of oil when it was turned. And we wouldn't, we'd have blown for to go to Florida with that guy. Yeah. So it's a good thing you tested that yeah. motor out. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Was that 60 or 61, Tom? 61. 61, okay. What was that experience like? You're out there with drivers you hadn't really raced against before. and No. What was the experience? Uh... They were hurting people and they were killing people. Then. Yeah. Um, we ran with stock interior. When I say stock interior, you had to have the window cranks in, you had to have, have the upholstery in, you had to have the windows in. The gas tank was in stock location. And um, they weren't safe. Yeah. Yeah. I think he drowned somebody one time. Got into the lake on the, off the back stretch. But they, they hurt quite a few people badly. And uh, I didn't join, and I was racing for fun. You know, I don't, I w wasn't trying to make a living from racing. I had a job. Yeah. So were, you, were you scared, Tom, at Daytona? I wouldn't say I was scared. I was not comfortable. Not comfortable. Yeah. yeah. So that was your way. You're, you're, you did it. You're not going to go back yeah. again. Well, the car didn't handle it good. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know why. And nobody really knew why until 62. But Julian saved a little money by buying a two door instead of a two door hardtop. Mm -hmm. In 62, that was the only thing you could buy in Ford was a two-door in a, in a short body. Mm -hmm. So in 62, none of the Fords did good. In 63, 
they pulled a 63 and a half, which was back to the old hardtop body. And that let them do away with that square back window and then it stayed put. The way the way that drove, it was like I was dirt tracking through the corner. And it was not comfortable. And cut my nine ten car links back, it would make it do stuff. My gosh. What was your style of driving? We've heard guys that, that sort of took an inside of the track. Squirt would talk about that. And, and then there were guys who would, would hit it and they kind of fishtail their way into it. What was your style of driving? i go where you go the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good answer. Did you, um, when you came back from Daytona in 1961, you had great success. Uh, at least at State Line, you won three of the first four features. Did you get a sense that you were just ahead of the curve, or had you were already seasoned? I think maybe, maybe the practice that helped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was your sense of State Line speed? Because you raced at Erie's, you raced at State Line. Uh, as far as comparing the two tracks, well, when they first built there, it was like a plowed field, <laughs> rough. And I did real well. Yeah. I went. I think I won four of the first five years. Yeah. And uh, it was nasty. We had shock decent, and it was a car we just built off the street, you know. What about Leonard Briggs? I love that he, smile. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> he, he, uh, he tried to line things up to make it most interesting for the fans. Mm -hmm. How did he do that? Was that just through the location of the... Of the line, line up, up where they where he put you in Star Wars. Did he have that much discretion where to put you, or was there uh, a formula? He was the total, total source of where they were going to be. <laughs> it was all in his head. Oh, is that right? Pretty, would, pretty much. They changed it some later, but it was pretty much all in his head first year. So if you had good, big success, you were likely to be at the end of everything. Oh, year. Yeah, yeah. I got to where I wouldn't even try to go to State 9 until I was sure I'd get there about the time for the 38. Oh, is that right? <laughs> There was no hurry I was going to be in 30 anyhow. How did the heats work? I don't think anybody's ever asked that. that that's that's the, where the lineup started. Okay. So the first heat would be the slower cars and then... Yeah. Second heat, so there'd be three heats and inevitably the third heat is where the bigger cars were. The, yeah. And then would from those results actually have an impact as to how you were placed in the final? Yeah. And they uh, they come up with a formula, I think, uh, finally. But uh, who knows what that might have been an undertaking too. <laughs> How would you know when you walked out when you went on the finals that somebody was there a the flag man say you're here you're here you're here? No, they put up a board with the oh I see line up. Okay, I assume you didn't always agree. <laughs> hey, what's your saga? <laughs> Ready to go home. <laughs> what about the the uh, Frank, Jerry Frank and Don Frank? Any sense of the of them? Both nice guys. Yeah. Jerry did a nice job taking Kurt's track. Mm -hmm. And Don, what was his role? Same thing. Was he... I really don't remember. What, he he was around there, but he was out there. Was there a, a driver that? That you tried to, um, that you had some sense of, I don't want to say awe, but you respected more than others. When you were on the track, you may have given him a little bit of deference or uh, whatever. Well, you always gave Bobby rum because he was going to, he was going to pass you anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> 
pretty much. Yeah. Anybody else that sort of fit the category with Bobby Schnarz? Hmm. You know, I haven't raced in 30 years or better. Yeah. Well, I remember What year did you stop racing, Tom? 76. Okay. Was there a time when you, wh why did you stop racing? What, did you wake up one morning and say, I've had enough of this? Uh, they didn't offer me a ride in the car that I'd driven okay. the previous year. And did they put somebody else in the car? I don't know if they just parked it or what. I, who was they? Who, who are you talking about? Uh, well, belonged to B&H. Uh, George Helsley? George Helsley. 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 Okay. Here's a quote from one of the programs. It says, A driver once referred to his own collection of racing awards as not very many, just five or six. He was told five or six is quite a few. But answered, man, you ought to see Tom Dill's house. He must have six or seven hundred of them. I, I didn't have that many, but in motorcycles, they give you a trophy just for being there. As well. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest race? What was the one where you, you sit back today and you say, that's the one I'm really the most proud of? I mean, you had some big ones, that 150 lap or the ARCA uh, race that you had. Uh, that was in Huntington, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was with that Ford or Giants. In state line, which is what you mean, because you race so many other tracks as well, and so we're kind of focusing on state line. Is, uh, is there a, an incident or a, uh, an accident or something <laughs> where you said, I don't believe that just happened? You know? <laughs> we had several Chevrolets, and Joe Mobia, who owned the cars, mm -hmm. was driving one himself, and one night he asked me, he said, there's something wrong with that car. He said, come off the corners and it pulls to the right. He said, take it for a ride, my face. So I had state line it, go on the track at the pit entrance there. Get down the back stretch. <clears throat> Through the one, two, come back up past the flagman. Over into the, the turn by the pit there. I come off the corner and it pulled to the right. And I hit the fence and rolled it over. <laughs> oh, gosh. And what did you say when you came back into the pits? I know it pulls the right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Joe. <laughs> Is Joe alive? Just barely, I understand. Oh. Just barely. Yeah. Are there many of, the, of your contemporary racers? Uh, around here who you are alive and, and you keep in touch with? No, some of my old pit crew I see occasionally. But. Yeah. And I run into people in town that I never knew that had been, been to race. I never knew my sister went to race. She, she went to the race every week, I didn't know it. Is that right? <laughs> Tom, that race that you won for Julian, that ARCA race in uh, West Virginia, yes. tell us about that race. I remember you got protested uh, at the end. It was yeah. a scoring dispute with Elmer right. Musgrave. Right. Tell us about that race. Well, they let us do something there that I'd never done before. I hadn't run a lot of black top. We ran some at Cleveland and some at... Uh, 
of Michigan. And we never get the car handling really good. I, oh, Toronto, uh, Montreal. Anyhow, at Huntington, the other stay at the racetrack in the evening and run the car and test slap it. So we got handling what I thought was good and what Julian thought was good and the car run just like it should for the entire race. And at the end, I was leading. And the right front tire blew as I crossed the finish line oh my gosh. for the white flag. And I finished the last lap with a flat right front. Wow. But you feel like it come on. <laughs> come on, baby. Keep going. Was Julian a, a hands-on car owner? Too, mu she, too much sometimes. <laughs> oh, is that right? Was he mechanically gifted, or was he? Did he just have ideas? He had ideas. At Daytona, I was resting in the back of our station wagon, and I heard a car running in the pits. Pretty handy where we were, and I, and it was the day it was supposed to time trial. Thing. And we we'll come by. I said, "What's it running?" I said, "It sounds like it's missing a little bit." And it was. It was Julian playing with the race car, distributor, and we qualified probably ten miles an hour slower than the car would run. You got it out of time. You got you got something wrong. I, too much drill or too little drill or something wrong. It, it wasn't running as good as it. And I heard it laying lay in the back of the wagon. In 1961, um, do you recall some of the NASCAR drivers that uh, you had to, you know, race against? Some of the household names were you were racing against right there. Oh, every, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> For quite a few years, yeah. a lot of them were still running. Yeah. Uh, back. Uh, Driver of the year, the rookie of the year in '60. Do you have any idea? 1960? Uh, Pearson? Pearson, okay, Pearson. He spun in front of me. Who did he? In the, in the 125s or whatever they were running in. And I put it down on the infield at but at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> And I don't know how many times I turned around, but I come out of the right side up and everything, and I continued down and around the racetrack. And he, he had hit the fence up in the one and two corner, and things were happening around. And I got on enough grass that messed it all. Uh, Hmm. What was your car number that year at the race, remember? I think it was 52, but I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, that's the kind of crazy thing that we can get film of the night of that race and we may see you. So we will make you, if we find it, we'll give you a copy of it. Well, my son has a little bit of what NASCAR had in the archives ah. at Daytona. Cool. And on a tape, not a lot of it, but it shows me coming back on the infield after having spun it on, on the racer. Well, that's but, true. But he's got it, and I'll have to give it, get you his address. I mean, that'd be wonderful. That would be, that would be true, because we'll put that as part of the movie here. Greg asked you about uh, Leonard and Jerry and Don, but 
He hasn't asked you about Lloyd Williams yet. <laughs> I didn't answer. Hey, he was he was all right. He he uh, preferred to let him, let him do all the hard stuff. <laughs> it, it, and he just backed him up. <laughs> did Lloyd ever give you a nickname? I mean, he often gave drivers nicknames. Did did he ever call you by? Nothing, no. <laughs> if he did, he didn't say it to my face. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I want to ask you about the very, very first race ever at Erie Speedway. Okay, in 61, about, about July, I guess it was. And, and like you said, you won that race and a bunch of them after that. I, in my notebook at home, I have recorded the first three finishers of every race ever held at Erie and Stateline. Oh, is that right? But I'm missing that very first race at Erie that you won. Do you have any idea who finished second or third in that first race? I've been to the libraries. I've been everywhere. Mm. I cannot find a record of that race. I've been dying to ask you this question for years. Mm. It wasn't in the. Wasn't in the newspapers. All it had was Tom Dill wins Erie's opener. They had some. Let's see. A book with uh, listings to who who won for what date and whatever. Yeah, the winners. Yeah. But that was as far as it went. Huh? Yeah, just the winners. It didn't give second mm. and third. You didn't. All your scrapbooks and everything are with your son. Is that, is that yeah. right? Yeah, and, and I didn't save a lot of stuff. Really? Didn't. Your wife wasn't cutting things out. And well, I had several wives and several oh. girlfriends. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that, we won't go there. <laughs> I've been married five times. Five? You have not. Oh yeah. Have you? How many children do you have, Tom? I got. Uh, Three boys. So there's Tom Jr. Yeah. And Michael. Michael. Stephen. Stephen. And one daughter. And her name? Charlie. Sh Sherry? Charlie. Oh, okay, Shirley. Charlie. Sh How do you? Oh, Charlene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, do they? Now you said Tom Jr. lives in Florida. Yeah. Where do your other kids live? Well. I haven't seen the daughter. In a okay. Time. Okay. Well, once Michael lives in Tucson. And okay. Stephen lives near. Did any of your boys ever race? No. I think after my son had about thirty-five, he was probably interested in it, but he was too old then. <laughs> well, that would have been been pretty hard for uh, boys to your boys to live up to the. Well, you got to what you, that. what you had done. I was 32 or so when I reached the town, 32 or 33. We well, had tremendous success. There was a program, Tom, called on the 25th anniversary of State Line. And they were remembering many of the racing greats, and you're, you're member, remembered. And it talks about how there was also um, uh, a long slender fellow with a lock of unruly brown hair dripping down over an eye who used to re regularly make the jalopy championship scene. One Tom Dill would pull the motor out of his late model, slap it into his coupe, and proceed to romp and stomp the competition. That didn't happen. <laughs> How did that they, happen? They did take a 409 and put it in a coupe body in I don't know, 60, 61 probably. That, that was first year for all that. Well, 61. <clears throat> and put a three quarter, three quarter ton truck running on it. And we tried around the ears. And I greased the clutch disc and stuffed the clutch. And 
Maybe it was the second one. Whatever, we traveled in the state line and got run into a broken axle on the inside of axle in a corner. It didn't do much, but it would run. It would run good with a pull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened was it. They kept changing the rules until they finally decided it was all right to put an overhead valve V8 in one. And that's why we did that. You had and good success, huh? We thought it might, we might as well have the best. <laughs> so we just took the, the extra 409 and put it in that body. Did you always run uh, car number 51? Yes. So that was your number. Where did that come from, Tom? Well, Richie had 52, so I took 51. Okay, I get it. Another racetrack that you used to go to in the late 50s was Thunder Bowl. Yeah, that's straight down at Nagel Road. And Where is it? At Nagel Road and Iroquois Avenue. How do I get there from here? I'll draw you a map and <laughs> you'll never find it. <laughs> if you stop by, I'll show you one day. I haven't been back in there in years. Okay. Sounds like a road show here. Yeah. It's not far. Okay. Why were there so many racetracks around here? Was it just a... Um, why was it so popular? I don't know. Okay. We we went quite a, quite a ways to race sometimes. <laughs> uh, we're in Cool Road Stadium, Coon Road, Harbor Creek, Thunder Bowl. Uh, Sulphur Springs, Sherman, uh, Warren one time. And then we ran some black tops, uh, Painville, Ohio, and Colgate Speedway. Yeah. And there was a time where you guys were drawing huge crowds, too. I mean, it was just a very popular sport, wasn't it? Well, you never know because they wouldn't tell you how many people still live. <laughs> they were probably afraid of having to pay. Income tax and all the money they had, <laughs> or having to pay out more of it. I really, <clears throat> we really don't have any idea how many people attended any race at any time. I don't, I don't think there's anybody checking close enough to know. <clears throat> what kind of money were you racing for at State Line in Erie in the, at the beginning? What kind of money to uh, win? Do you I between five and seven hundred dollars most of the time. Really? I mean, most covering the whole. Area. That's more than I thought. Snack could probably tell you better than anyway. He took much of it. But <laughs> <laughs> did you ever? Uh, did. You always had another job. I mean, you never were a full-time racer. No, Is that no, correct? Right. You always worked yeah, a regular yeah, job. Yeah. Bob told us about how in the summer times he didn't have another job. He yeah. just worked on his race car all yeah, day, and then yeah. in the winter time, then he'd get a job. Yeah. But you never did that. No. Uh, okay. Did you work at it? Was it Erie Industrial Trucking? Did Erie Industrial Truck forklift stuff. Okay. Work. You were always a mechanic yeah. of some sort in yeah. your lifetime, right? Right. Because of your reputation, Tom, be from all the other drivers of being a an aggressive driver, did you ever find that when you walked into the pits at the end of a race, somebody might have a conversation with you about your <laughs> aggressiveness? When they the stadium. <laughs> <clears throat> I um, I put the car in the pit and walked towards the racetrack, and there was somebody running towards the pits, and I 
I didn't uh, pay too much attention to him until him to hit me right in the mouth. Oh, gee. Uh, and he was running full tilt and just leveled me. <laughs> I mean, I just went flat. It never hurt me. I guess. Never hurt me. Uh, it was so unexpected that yeah. I just relaxed when he hit me, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Did that happen much at all? I mean, uh, in the in the pits, where the was there sort of uh, screaming and yelling and maybe yeah, there was there was uh, first years uh, considerable conversation between <laughs> various pit crews and drivers, but that kind of faded away. Yeah. I mean, they still got it, you know. Oh yeah. Well, you see it even on NASCAR every once in a while. Right. Um, from your perspective, was there somebody who sort of had a quick trigger and was wouldn't mind banging into you or anybody else out there? The kind of guy you again, you mentioned Floyd Finale. Was there anybody else that was, comes to mind? Yeah, what what's the guy's name? That Moved to Florida. Uh, Kenny Johnson. Kenny. 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 He's only operating with one arm now, you know. Kenny passed away. Oh, he did? Yes, he did, Tom. When? I'm going to say uh, it was either this spring or a year ago spring. I, oh, I, I lost that. track of time, but yeah, Kenny passed yeah, away he, finally. Yeah, he lost his arm in a motorcycle wreck, wasn't it? Uh, it wasn't a wreck. Oh. His kid had a motorcycle. And he, he rode to it. He got on his kid's motorcycle one day to go for a ride and took off. And then they put the kickstand up. He went to make a left turn. Oh. And the kickstand threw him to the ground. And he had uh, at least one decent used car line in a decent house over on the beach. And uh, he lost all of it. Very good. Because of the medical bills? Evidently. Evidently. Wow. He could have been Ouch. Wow. But he was pretty aggressive? Yeah. <laughs> I can remember at Erie's when they first opened, he, was, he ran good. But he might have run second. You know? Ooh, that would be good to know. Anyhow, uh, it was like running on a gravel road almost <laughs> with some few bigger rocks. Yeah. <clears throat> and I passed Kenny going into one. I mean, I passed him fast. <clears throat> and put the car sideways and probably fill this car full of rocks and dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and went on to win that race. Maybe Kenny. Yeah. But I'm sure that he was right near the front. What is the question we should be asking Tom Dill that we haven't asked yet? What's the thing that you're saying? I can't believe they haven't asked me about this. <laughs> Is there anything that's in your racing career, especially state line, that kind of jumps out? Not really. Just best I used to consider <clears throat> the roads between here and state line practice. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I love it. <laughs> oh gosh. So so. Would somebody actually uh, many times tow the car there, or did you? Uh... Uh, we did first years, but in fact, one night the treasure tank broke off in Panama. They came and got me, and I drove the car on order state line from <laughs> Panama. <laughs> did you? you I was going to ask, did the police ever find that this practice run you from Erie to? Court Ride Road was uh, 
they thought that was inappropriate? No. No. Most of it was back roads, dirt right. roads. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Everybody you ever talk to that's been involved in the racing game always has a story to tell about towing to a racetrack. Somewhere in their career, something yeah. bad happened on the way <laughs> to a racetrack. Oh, they were towing me, towing the uh, coupe to uh, Silver Spring, I guess. Friend of mine worked for somebody that had dump trucks. So we, we didn't, I don't know what, usually I'd tow it with my 56 Chevy, mm -hmm. but he had the dump truck, so he loaded in, in the dump truck. In the dump truck, the tailgate's probably this high. Then you put the gate up a little so it don't roll out. But he came up 38 feet hill and it rolled out. <laughs> And it didn't hurt it. You dropped the race car right on 38th Street. Yeah. <laughs> we down to, down the hall there on Jordan Run. Yeah. I don't know if you, it's a one connection between Station Road and, and 38th Street. That's terrific. Was there anybody following that dump truck Evident as that ca race car rolled out? Evidently not. <laughs> I, I wasn't. You weren't there. I wasn't there. Good thing. <laughs> yeah. To Tom Dill, thank you. This has been terrific. This is a bonus for us. I can't tell you how much fun this is for us to come down and talk. Tom, your memory is really excellent. Uh, you haven't forgotten yeah. one thing. Uh, this, this stroke didn't help me. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it, Tom. You haven't forgotten anything. No. Your memory is sh as sharp as anybody we've talked to. You're doing great. Well, we'd love to get the address of your son because we can do that, right?